In this video, I'll show you how you can make Claude automatically fix your GitHub code for you just by using a simple command. Also, you can stop wasting hours manually debugging and build features up to 15 times faster. And at the end of this video, I'll also reveal a simple change that you can make that can cut your Claude code costs by over 91%. So if you wanna boost your productivity and dramatically cut your costs, let's dive right in. All right, so I have this working Next.js app here running locally on my computer from the command line. It's a simple tool that allows you to give your video feedback, you can watch a video, and at any given time I can come here, I can write on the screen, I can tell them that they did this wrong, I can leave a comment, and then it keeps track of all of the feedback. And I can switch back and forth between the various comments. You can see if I reload the application, it comes up fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my application, and I'm going to purposefully add an error into the code. Just like that, I'm going to go ahead and save it. It's now going to be causing an error. So if I try to launch this site, you're going to see that we have this error. And so we're going to use Claude code inside GitHub to automatically fix this inside the issue once we tag Claude code. So I've got VS code here up and running. I've got Claude code right here. I do happen to have a prompt that is going to walk us through this process. I had a more basic prompt earlier that I used to go through this process once before, but after that, I was able to refine that prompt and make it a bit better. That should make this process a bit easier. Feel free to pause the video and screenshot the prompt so you can copy it over for yourself. I'm going to go ahead and paste this into Claude, but keep in mind, I I already have this project in GitHub, and so we're going to work and add the GitHub actions straight to this repo. In fact, before I execute this, I'm going to go ahead and come back to the command line here. I'm going to do a git status. And if you do want to learn more about git, there is a video on my channel that you can take advantage of. It'll walk you through everything. If I do a git diff, this is going to show that text that I added to the main page here that's causing the error. I'm going to do a git add dot, and it's going to add that file. Then I'm going to do a commit test error for Claude code github integration and then i'll go ahead and do git push origin and if we jump back to github refresh we're going to see this commit here and if we were to jump inside we would see the error that we just added so now i'm going to jump back to visual studio we have the prompt here it's essentially going to walk us through this integration that is on cloud code's actual documentation there's quite a few use cases that you can go through in this case we're going to use it to fix bugs by mentioning cloud in GitHub issues, but I'm going to cover additional things in future videos like security reviews, and it should be pretty cool. So this prompt is going to go ahead and update the code to add the GitHub actions to implement this feature. It's also going to walk us through the various configuration steps that we need to take inside of GitHub itself, including creating keys and secrets and stuff like that. So before I execute this, I am going to do shift tab and I'm going to go into plan mode. That way, Cloud Code is going to come up with a plan before it gets started. So here it's starting to do some of its own research. All right, so it's got the plan here. I'm going to go ahead and let it get started. And whatever it doesn't do right, we'll just correct on the way because you never know what it's going to do. And by the way, once we're done setting this up with Cloud Code, I am going to show you how to integrate Cloud Code with DeepSeek so that you can run this 12 times cheaper than if you're using Cloud code models. So it's creating the GitHub action here. Go ahead and accept. That means it's going to create this folder here, GitHub, and we've got this file that it just created here. So this will have to be committed to GitHub before it will actually run. All right, so it created the GitHub action, which is going to trigger the process. Now there's a few manual steps we have to take, and we do have to push this to GitHub in order for this to work as well. So let's just go through the steps as it has here. First thing that we need to do is we need to go to Anthropic and get a key. It's going to name it delete me. Here is our key. Come back to the instructions. Step two here, we need to install the cloud GitHub app. Click on this link, we'll install. I'm going to install it only on this particular repository. Install and authorize. Come back to the instructions here. Now we have to add our cloud API key to our secrets. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new secret. I'm going to add the secret here but we need to name it this. I'm going to copy and paste just like that. We'll add the secret. Now we need to go ahead and push this GitHub action file up to GitHub so that it has access to it. So again, we'll do a git status. It looks like Cloud Code has already committed this to our local repo. So we just need to do a git push origin main. I'll jump back to GitHub here. So we have this and now we have our git workflow here, right here. Perfect. Jump back to the instructions. Now it's telling us to go ahead and test. However, there's one thing that we do need to add. We need to create a GitHub token and also install that into the secrets, just like we did the API key. This happened the last time when I was setting this up by myself. It forgot to do that. It did add it here, but it didn't actually tell us to create the token and add it to the secrets. So I'm gonna jump back to GitHub. 
going to go to my personal settings here. I'm going to come down here to developer settings. I'm going to go to personal access tokens, tokens classic. I'm going to generate a new token. I'm going to have it expire tomorrow. I'm going to call it delete me. Now, in terms of permissions, I'm not 100% sure on what we need here, but I know we need access to the repository and I believe the workflow. We won't need to write and delete packages or administer keys or administer any webhooks. We might need notifications. I'm going to select projects here as well. And if it doesn't work, we can always add more. We'll generate that token and I'm going to copy this token here. Then I'm going to come back to the repo settings here and I'm going to add another secret for GitHub Actions, create a new secret. And then let's take a look at what the key was again. Looks like it's looking for a GitHub token. I'll just copy this and we'll add that here. Add secret. All right, so it looks like you're not allowed to start it with GitHub. So I'm just going to go ahead, call it GH. Now, in this case, I'm just going to go and directly modify the file here. I could have Claude code do it, and then we could just push the changes locally back up. But just to make things a bit faster, I'm just going to change this to GitHub. We'll commit those changes, commit directly to the main branch. I am going to pull those changes down, however, git pull origin. That way we have it locally. So if you look here, we have it. So now I believe we should be able to come to our issue here and give this a test and see how it's working. Main page doesn't load. I'll go ahead and type npm run dev. And again, I'll try to load the site. You could take the error from here. You could also take it from the terminal here as well create that issue. And now I'm going to go ahead and tag Claude. Hey, please help me fix this issue. Go ahead and leave the comment. Notice we have those little eyes pop up. That means Claude's looking at it. Once you see that, you should be able to jump over to the actions and we can actually watch what's happening here. All right, so it's actually firing off. You can see Claude code is starting up. So it looks like it found the issue. There's an error. So now it's going to push the changes. It's going to leave a comment. So while that is running, I'm just going to jump over here and go to the issues. Let's see if it made a comment back. So it did find the issue. So it says it's finished. I'm going to come back to the main site. It looks like we have the issue here. Awesome, which is great. And if we look at the actual fix, we can see that it took out the error, which is awesome. But we aren't seeing an actual pull request. So once it creates this issue, it should submit a new pull request. So I'm going to just jump back to cloud code. Everything worked fine. I did need to update the GitHub token name because it should not have GitHub in the name. However, after creating the new branch and committing it successfully, it did not send a PR for the issue. Please update the GitHub action to automatically add a pull request with comments to the GitHub action. All right, so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and move forward. Now, one thing that I have noticed here is that sometimes when it's trying to figure out something related to GitHub actions, it's continuing to ask Claude. But in reality, this isn't a Claude code thing. This is a GitHub thing. So I'm just going to stop it. And I just happen to know that. So I'm going to say, you don't need to look up Claude code docs. This is a GitHub actions feature. So look up GitHub actions documentation if you need help updating the GitHub action. So we've already done what we needed to do with Claude code. What we need here is an additional step here that when this is successful, it creates the pull request that has nothing to do with Claude code and the integration between GitHub at this point. And it's like, you're right. So it's just going to add that now. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It tells me what type of content you want more of. Now, one thing I do know is that it should only issue this pull request if it's successful. And there is a command to add here. Make sure to only add the pull request if the previous step was successful. So now it has the if success. Perfect. OK, great. Add commit. And then I will push to main manually. So I'm just telling it to add the file and I wrote comment. Let's see if it commits it. I meant to say commit. I'll open a new terminal so I can run the app and run GitHub at the same time. Git push origin main. All right, back to GitHub. And now here we have our new updated GitHub action right here. So now I'm going to go back to the issue. I'm just going to delete these just in case it causes any issues. 
and we'll do it again. There we see Claude is looking at the issue again. We can come over to the actions to run it again. Perfect. So you can see this time it's doing the same thing, except it's going to create that pull request. All right, so it looks like it's done. I'm gonna jump back to GitHub. All right, so we have our pull request here. We'll check it out. And here it is. I'm gonna jump in there. My Vercel bot also came in after that to redeploy the fix. We can take a look at the files change. We should see it updated the page and it looks like it did not. So it looks like we do have a little issue here. What we should see here is the actual pull request for this particular issue that we just finished here. So if I come back to the GitHub action, take a look. I think I see what's happening here is that it's creating a pull request, but it's using somebody else's methodology here. So this is where Cloud Code made a mistake and it used something that it should not have. I'm noticing an issue with the pull request. It actually didn't use the previous branch that was successfully created in the previous step. Instead, it made a new branch and made a comment in an output.txt file, which was really strange. I noticed the use of, I'm just gonna copy this, which is adding unexpected behavior. Please simplify and only submit a standard PR for the branch created in the previous step. So again, just stuff you have to look out for and be ready for and test. All right, so now we have the updated version. I'm just gonna jump back. I can do this faster on my own. Git status, git add dot, git commit, fix to GitHub action, git push origin main. I will close this out and we'll delete these just in case. And we do have our new code here. Come back. There we go. Back to the GitHub action. We'll come back after this is completed correctly this time. All right, so now it created the pull request. Take a look at this one here. Files changed. Cool, so now it's actually fixing the bug in the pull request using the issue that it created instead of going off track and using somebody else's solution. Those are the things you need to be aware of because sometimes Cloud will do strange things like that. And if you see an issue, at the very least, you have to be able to tell Cloud Code what you saw and any anomalies that you might see so that it can figure out how to fix it for you. So I'll go ahead and merge this pull request into the main branch, come back here. So now the main branch has that new issue applied. So if I come back to the terminal here and I say git pull origin main, it's going to pull down that fix and our app is automatically going to restart. And if I come back to our app, it loads back up again. Perfect. And so if it wasn't obvious, what I just did with that git pull origin main was that I pulled down the fix that we just made in that PR. That PR went back into the main branch from this other branch. And again, if you do want to understand git better, make sure to check out the git basics on my channel. But we basically pulled that fix from Cloud Code back down to our local environment so that it runs successfully. All right, so now what I wanna show you how to do is to set up DeepSeek with Cloud Code. So Cloud Code is typically using its own Cloud models in the back end. We were just using Sonnet 4.5, but we can actually use DeepSeek with Cloud Code instead, and it is 12 times cheaper. And I did another video on this specifically on my channel, and I did two different projects side by side, Cloud Code with DeepSeek and Cloud Code with Sonnet. 4.5, and the results were just about the same, except for the fact that DeepSeek was 12 times faster. And for doing this kind of stuff where we're fixing bugs automatically, I think this is a really great use case for using DeepSeek. So I'm gonna use this information here to help me modify our GitHub action here to use DeepSeek instead. And by the way, if you want access to all of this easy to use information, including getting a hold of this GitHub actions file that you can add to your repo so that you don't have to use Cloud Code to help you build it, make sure to jump into the Vibe Encoders community. I've got a course in here on how to build out your own SaaS, how to use Cloud Code with MCPs, how to use Git. And not only do I have a SaaS framework in here with built-in user authentication and payments, but I actually show you how to build that framework step-by-step -step using Cloud Code, which is a great primer on how to code with AI. All right, so I'm gonna jump over to Cloud Code. I'd like help updating the GitHub Actions Cloud Code section to use the DeepSeq model instead. I've already verified this works. We just need to send the DeepSeq API key instead of 
anthropic, and we have to pass a couple extra ENV vars. So I'm going to grab this here. You can pause the video and take a screenshot. I'm going to dump it here. Now I do need to actually get a working API key. I have a DeepSeek account. I'm going to jump over to my API keys. I'm going to create a new key. I'm going to copy this key. We're going to put it right here. There's a couple other variables here that we're going to add as well because it just helps DeepSeek work better with Cloud Code. These are some things I've already verified myself. So to recap, add the base URL model, small fast model, API timeout, and non-essential traffic as ENV vars, and then update the GitHub action to use, I'm gonna grab this as well, instead of the Anthropic. So we'll let that update. While that's running, I'm gonna add the DeepSeek key to my secrets in GitHub, jump back over here, jump back to the settings, secrets, actions, add a new secret. This is gonna be the deep Seek API key. We will grab that from DeepSeek, add secret. Looks like Cloud Code is finished. So now we're passing the DeepSeek API key instead, and we have our new ENV variables that were essential for using DeepSeek instead of the Sonnet model from Cloud. I'm also going to come back to our page. I'm going to add the error back so we have something to fix. Come back to our terminal. We've got our error showing up again. That means our app won't load. Come back to the repo, do a git status, git add dot, git commit, added another error and deep seek support, git push origin main, jump back to GitHub and we can see our change right here. I'm gonna create a new issue, page won't load. I'm gonna grab the new issue just because I might've put it at a different line and it might be confusing if I don't put the new error create that. And so we're going to tag Cloud Code again, but Cloud Code is going to use DeepSeek to fix the issue instead of its own, thereby making it 12 times cheaper. So we'll make the comment, should see our little eyes pop in, there we go. I'm going to jump up to the actions. Now when you see it working this time, we should see some indications that we are using DeepSeek instead of Cloud Code. And it will take a second, but if you come over to DeepSeek here and go to usage, it might take a second, it says it's a few minutes delayed but you should start to see that showing up here and how much you're actually paying. But the fact that we see it interacting with the DeepSeek chat right here in the logs is a good sign that it's using it. And if I were to come back here to the code and look at the GitHub action here, we can see that we have the new information in here. It's just using DeepSeek and the DeepSeek key. All right, so it was successful and it made the pull request. We can check that out. Files changed, removed the error. So again, we could merge the pull request, confirm the merge, and then we could pull that down. And now we can see that this automatically restarted and our app is loading. And we can now see those charges starting to come through here in the DeepSeek API. Now, if you wanna get access to all these resources, including these files like the GitHub Action, so you don't have to build it all out with Cloud Code, as well as access to this classroom so that you can build out your own SaaS framework, learn how to better use MCPs and Git, and build out your own SaaS with our SaaS framework, jump into the Vibe Encoders community. That's a great group of entrepreneurs working together and helping each other out. We've got calls on Wednesday for support and a networking call on Fridays. I'd love to see you inside the community. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.